Hello and welcome back. I'm Nicole, the Cottage Witch, and today I'm going to attempt to record uh, my herbal apothecary reorganization situation. As you can see, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, most of these used to be just over there on that shelf. Um, I say most of them, about half of them. The other half used to be just behind me um, in a box on top of my microwave. And it, everything was starting to get a bit overrun and ridiculous and I could never find anything even if I thought I was pretty sure I had it. So I've got a shelf situation. Now I might, this did not come with it. This is a tray that I got from Superstore, I think. Um, and I might get another one to add another shelf here because I don't have any spice jars that are this tall because it's just me, so I don't need gigantic um, jars for herbs and things. And then around some of these, I've put these little, oh, I can't see that, there we go, uh, these little strings. This is uh, version one, this is just holding this in. And then this, hopefully, um, if everything goes well, will just be a sort of like a guard wear, guard rail uh, for the herbs so they don't slide off because it's just a flat uh, shelf and I'm uh, uncoordinated. So that's the general idea. Let's see if I can zoom out here. Yeah, I can. Okay, great. Um, I'll try and make this not too chaotic a video, but uh, who knows. Anyway, I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna organize these. I think maybe alphabetically uh, for a start and then I'll try that for a few weeks and then if that doesn't work for me, I might organize them by some other characteristic. The difficulty is I can't organize them by what they do because they don't just do one specific thing. So we'll see. Um, and I may, if these little string guardrail things work, they may need to get tightened up a bit. I may crochet or braid a little something and tie it around. Uh, this was last night's um, prototype, I guess you could say. So anyway. Uh, oh, I do have echinacea. I've never used echinacea. I have it in pill form. Why I've never used it in a tea, I don't know. I really should try it sometime. Um, but that's that. I need to harvest more plantain. As you can see, there's hardly any in there. I love plantain. Uh, it's so gentle and so sweet. Um, lamb's quarter is pretty gentle too. Uh, this, most of these are just in little canning jars. Some of these um, in random other kinds of jars. Uh, let me I always need to recite the alphabet to myself to remember. You'd, th you'd think I'd know, but uh, do I always? No. Uh, calendula, I've got a few more uh, flowers to harvest. It's such a sunny, warm, but also a soothing flower. I really enjoy that one. Um, you know what I should maybe do? I start with a couple of the bigger ones. So this gigantic container is chickweed, because it grows like weed and I have still a ton of it on my balcony. Um, I've got some yarrow, yarrow here. Ooh. <coughs> A little frog in my throat too, whoops. I did put also uh, 3M, uh, those just sticker picture hanger things behind the shelves to, it's not gonna hold the shelf up or anything by any means, but it keeps it from swaying of its own volition until I run into it and then it'll sway regardless. Um, I really don't know if all of these will fit on here. Let's see, I'm not actually, optimistic that that <laughs> will happen. Uh, nettle. Um, I actually didn't have as much nettle on my balcony as I wanted this year because I go through a lot of it. Uh, so I bought a nettle tea at the farmer's market, which will get hidden away in a corner because it definitely will not fit on here, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, I might have to put the bigger ones on the bottom. Yeah, we'll see. Not entirely sure uh, if this is even gonna work. I have currants. Um, this is this is why I need to get them more in an open space, though, 
because I've had these for a year and I have not used them and I really should use them. There's no reason not to use them except that they were sort of out of sight in a corner um, and so I didn't. So really need to rectify that. Uh, lemon balm. I've had a good harvest of lemon balm this year. I tried it last night with valerian tea because valerian tea, the flavor doesn't, I don't, I didn't hate it, but it doesn't do anything for me. Uh, lemon balm, on the other hand, is lovely. Now, how am I going to get these ones in here? That's a good question. All right. Spearmint. Interesting. Let me go down there. And the other big one is, oh yeah, rose hips, which doesn't have a label, but it's obviously rose hips. And I'm still waiting for our first frost. The climate change is screwing things up here a bit because I'm in Canada, in Alberta, and usually our first frost is Labor Day weekend. Um, but it hasn't happened yet, and it's like mid-September as I'm filming this, and it's 29 degrees outside. It is ridiculous. That's not supposed to be a thing. So, yeah, not really sure about that one. Um... Yeah, not, not thrilled. Would prefer fall. Um, spring and fall weather are by far my favorites. Um, <laughs> self heal has one lone leaf that I collected from just before it died because I don't know why it died this year. Uh, but it did. It did not like anything about its situation. So I have very little self heal, unfortunately. And I d that's one of those herbs that, um, so I should tilt down to this there's the bottom shelf. I might need uh, a shelf in between here. Um, that's one of those herbs I don't know where to get if I don't grow it myself because it's not so uh, readily available everywhere. So <clears throat> I am keeping an eye out. <coughs> um, apple blossoms. I'm not sure what I'm going to use those for yet, but they I harvested them in the spring. And they're lovely. What's this? Chamomile. Oh yeah, my chamomile plant died too, so it has very little as well. So I may actually keep that aside and just use it right up. Uh, raspberry leaves. So I have two different jars of raspberry leaves because this jar, you can see that, is just the regular sort of ground up leaf that I bought from, I don't know, a tea company of some sort, I can't remember. And uh, it's all right, but the uh, Black Forager on Instagram suggested another way of doing things. Now this looks a bit weird, <laughs> it looks slightly questionable, but it's rolled up, like scrunched up, and then fermented for a day in a jar, and then dried, and then I put it in this jar. And it, I wish I could uh, let you smell it, because it smells so much stronger and tastes so much better. It's not even funny. I don't know how that works, but it is wonderful and I will never dry either raspberry or strawberry leaves again without fermenting them for a day because it makes so much difference to the flavor. Um, this is horsetail and horsetail, I actually surprisingly found some in Calgary. I wasn't expecting that because usually it's too dry here, I think but there are a few places down by the river where it can grow. And uh, so it's another one of those ones where I have this, I think it's the same company, um, European company of some sort from a shop at the farmer's market. And this is a good tea. I like this horsetail tea. I had another box like this um, that I used up this summer flavoring kombucha and making iced tea and that sort of thing. And then I found some, so I collected some. So probably I'll put that box in another little storage um, situation until I'm done with the more fresh uh, horsetail. Because, uh, I mean, this I know I picked this summer. It's in bigger stock, so I can scrunch it up into smaller bits for more flavor. I mean, it doesn't have a strong flavor um, when I make tea. Uh, as opposed to the stuff in a, in a tea bag that may have been in a box for two years, I have no idea. Um, this is mullen, which 
is pretty full now. It's been a pretty decent year for my little mullein plant on my balcony. I'm not really sure. I haven't used mullein for anything, and I've heard conflicting things about using it internally. Some people do, some people don't. There may be some evidence to suggest that it's not healthy internally, but I don't know that anything is like hard and fast or whatnot. So I don't really know about that yet, but it's there anyway, for whenever I figure it out. Um, uh, wild rose petals, which I'll also stick down on the bottom shelf here that's getting quite full already. I love wild, everything about wild roses. Um, in Alberta, I love, except for the politicians. Politicians who call the, who used to be called the Wild Rose Party are a bit bonkers. I'd say a bit. A bit is probably generous. They're nuts. Um, <laughs> they're pretty extreme. But the Wild Rose plant is gorgeous and I love it. And uh, it's good for so many things. And the Wild Rose petals are just uh, a delightful version of rose petals to use in any sort of floral, anytime you want a floral scent, the rose hips, uh, of course, very high in vitamin C. So anyway, love those. Uh, Fever few, which I've actually grown, you can see some of the little flowers in the bottom. Um, looks like a funny little plant. The flowers look vaguely chamomile-like, while the leaves look sort of parsley-like. So it's a curious one. I'd never grown it before. That was a new experiment. And so I haven't used that. And I'll sort of just see how that goes. Um, milk thistle leaves. Um, I didn't have the buds of the milk thistle, uh, so I think it's in here. Where is uh, the everything's in Polish. Okay. Well, that's okay. I think Polish and French. Uh, French would be okay if the ingredients list was listed, but anyway, uh, enough of that. Uh, I have another box of this as well, which will go in the corner for when I'm out of my thistle because it doesn't, it didn't grow very well this year. It's not looking very healthy, so I probably won't harvest anything and then I'll see if it comes back next year. Um, it didn't, it hasn't flowered this year and it just looks a bit unwell, so not quite quite sure what's going on there. Oh, and take this out. Move it on. It might, you know what, I might have to move the lemon balm and just put ones that are this size in here because, oh, I can push them further back. Ah, okay. Well, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, next buffalo berries. There are very few in there. I don't use them very often. And these were like the currants. Um, take those back up again. They were with the currants in a sort of corner and didn't really ever get used for anything ever. Um, so I'm trying to rectify that. And then birch leaves, I just harvested uh, probably enough for one or two cups of tea this spring. And I'll probably have that sometime this winter. I didn't harvest a ton because I didn't know if I'd like it yet and I didn't want to waste any because I love the birch, so yeah. Didn't want to waste. So we'll see if I like it enough for more tea later. Hmm. <laughs> Trying to strategize here. Had a how to. Okay, it's not gonna be able to be exactly alphabetical. That's just, I think, not going to work. Actually, I might put in the back this uh, cedar package. There's not a lot of cedar that grows in Alberta unless you plant it. Um, I don't know about the mountains and further north there might be. Uh, but where I live, it's pretty rare unless somebody's growing it in their, you know, garden or something. So I got this cedar What's the company called? Aqua? I think it's an indigenous owned company in Quebec. There, I'll put that on the screen. Um, yeah, there's, whoops. First Nations in Quebec, Natassanin territory. 
I know very little about Je Quebec uh, First Nations, so apologies for that. But uh, yeah, cedar is lovely, but I can't really get it here so easily, so. Because it's taller, stick in the back. There we go. Yeah, not, not convinced by that at the moment. There, that works a bit better. Uh, all right, what's next? Uh, sink foil. Sink foil, I don't have very much. I actually, there's one in the front yard of the building that I live in, so I should go harvest some more uh, at some point, but I haven't done that yet. Um, let me put the lemon bone down on the bottom shelf and then, yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright. So what's next? Uh, these are store-bought ones. I have actually the catnip. I don't know if you can see, but slightly along the top I've got some from my balcony. And I've got a bit more to harvest. And then this is just ginger for uh, dried and crushed up for tea. So those are the those. Mm -hmm. Sink for Actually, I might put that down there. The ginger and fever few can go together, I suppose. Um, until I change my mind. Uh, I have some white willow bark. I have actually a couple of containers. But this container I may keep for other witchier purposes. Because it's just... I'll take the lid off here. Um, some twigs of both uh, white willow or not white willow. Well some sort of rover willow. It might have been white willow, I can't remember. And red osier dogwood, which is not a willow, but some indigenous people have called it black, uh, black, red willow, because it looks, the the leaves don't look the same, but the, the twigs, especially when they're thin, look very similar, except they're red. But I may keep this aside for other uh, uses. I'm not sure yet. I have not come to any decisions regarding willow in my life generally. <laughs> but this little one, actually I think this little one could probably go in here. Um, what do I have here? Dandelion. Now this seems a bit ridiculous to me, but this is dandelion tea. Not the fact that I have dandelion tea, that's not the ridiculous thing. The ridiculous thing is that I don't really have access to as much dandelion as I would like that's not sprayed. So I live in a downtown area that's all concrete and uh, litter and chemicals and exhaust. It's lovely. Um, it's, it's not quite my uh, uh, cottage in the woods dream scenario, but anyway, it'll do for now. And uh, but it's really frustrating to we see dandelions everywhere and know that either like dogs have peed on them or people have stepped on them or they've been sprayed with God knows what. So I did find some this year, but I used the flowers for, I just picked the flowers, which I used for a syrup that is still in my fridge. It's lovely. It's very honey-like actually, very nice. Should find a better use for that. Actually might use it in tea in the winter. I don't know. When I need, when things need, um, <laughs> brighten it up uh, or I feel like I need a general sort of I don't use the word detox very often because I feel like it's overused in a in a way that is not scientifically <laughs> supported yeah, at all really but basically if I feel like I need like a refresh I will probably use that apparently it's quite good for your liver so I don't know I don't think my liver needs quite as much help maybe as some other people's but there we are. This is so. This is the leaf and the root. Um, and someday, if I have my own yard and garden and everything, I'll just let the dandelions grow and be very happy about that situation. <laughs> In the meantime, gee. All right. Okay. So clearly, this is mislabeled because this is labeled wild rose hips, and it is not. I don't even think those are wild rose petals. I think they're just regular rose petals. So I'll put them with the other rose petals for now, um, just down here, but I might uh, rehome the, them or relabel that container or something. Um, sea buckthorn is, they look a bit questionable right now because they're brown, 
because they're dry. But they're bright yellow berry. <coughs> it is, I just harvested some this morning, which maybe I'll insert a picture here once I've got them all on the drying sheet. But they're basically what I'd consider to be the tropical fruit of the north. They're a bit they're a bit sour, so I consider them like a, a tiny bit mangoey, a little bit citrusy. They're yellow, they're bright, they're vibrant. Very enthusiastic sort of berries. Apparently very good for your skin, although again, you know, that's, that's a traditional herbal use, not a um, researched one. But anyway, I love them. <laughs> they're lovely. They are a mess to harvest, but I have those now and I'm very happy about it. And they were in the same boat as the black currants where they just didn't get used because they were in a box in the corner. Uh, elderberries, I love elder. If I ever have a backyard, elder is one of those things that I will be definitely be planting. So this, there's a spice company near me that sells elderberries and they are divine. Actually, do I have? If I turn up the, uh, um, 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 elderflowers at some point, I think I have elderflowers. I definitely have an elderflower syrup and just bought some more at the farmer's market today, uh, because it's my go-to in the winter when I feel a cough or cold coming on. Bee balm. I thought I had bee balm already. Nope, that was catnip I was thinking of. Okay. So I have some bee balm. Um, I've got a bit more to harvest. This is the teeny tiny amount from last year. Um, so I'll rotate that at some point this fall when it's not 29 degrees on, on my balcony. Oh, I do have milk thistle blossoms. Ah, I forgot about these. See, th this is why I need a better apothecary situation because I forgot that these existed, which is unfortunate because they're lovely and I should use them for something at some point. Um, I'd have to look up the uses of milk thistle because I'm blanking on that at the moment. Um, mallow, I harvested from actually my brother's yard and I've just got a tiny bit and I haven't used it for anything yet, but it's, it's very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mucilaginous, took me a while, but I got there. Um, it is very soothing if you have like a really raw throat or anything like that, anything or raw anything, topical internally. It's good for all of that sort of thing uh, because it's just so gentle and soothing and coats mucous membranes really well. So I uh, need to find a supply, a more steady supply, but this is my emergency tiny supply for the time being. Um, hibiscus flowers I have for the color and the flavor. If they do anything um, medicinally, I'm not aware. Uh, I could just be not aware. That is absolutely plausible. Okay, these need to get rearranged here now. Um, hibiscus, there we go. And then I have some lavender. And I know they're good for sleep. I don't usually use enough for sleep. I, though I do use them in a blend that I call a serenity blend, and maybe I'll show the tea blends I've made after this. Um, because it is very calming, but I don't like it. I find it like uh, cumin, where I like it, but only in small amounts as part of another blend, not when it's the dominant flavor. So, where to put this? Lamb's quarter, horsetail. The horsetail can come over here. The lavender can go with the lamb's quarter. <coughs> Excuse me. That'll be fine. Uh, more rose hips. Okay, so I have, <laughs> as you as you might be able to tell, I really do love rose hips. So I've got these ones that I've harvested, and then these ones from that local spice store to me. These ones, as you can see, have been peeled off the seeds inside. So rearranging things slightly. These ones are still whole and dried and I'll use them in tea, but these ones I could use in any sort of concoction where I want to keep the fruit, um, like a jam or something. I've never made a rose hip jam. Maybe I'll try that. Anyway, um, the seeds within the fruit have little irritating hairs on them, so you don't eat those. It's known as the itchy bum plant. 
for that reason. Um, so, uh, yeah, not ideal for just, uh, eat, uh, if you, you want to eat the whole thing. But if I'm just using the tea and straining it out well enough, um, and it's a whole berry, then I think that's fine. All right, this is elder. This is, uh, this is my emergency elderberry tea, which I'll probably put in a bo box in the corner because I've got these elder, those elder flowers <laughs> um, from the spice shop. And I'll use those up first. Um, okay. Now, hmm, I have a couple, most of, mostly these are things that I find in harvest in jars, but I do have Labrador tea, which is a Northern Canadian marshy sort of, I think it's usually in swampy areas. And it is, does it have it on here? Any sort of description of it? No. Oh, there, on the back. It's also called muskeg tea, and it's really, it's a beautiful tea. <clears throat> Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it's very soothing and gentle, uh, but I think is it the it was either the book by the Anishinaabe or Cree authors that I've read who suggested only taking it up to three times a month, something like that, uh, so as not to overdo it, um, because apparently you can't overdo this. And then I will hmm. Mm -hmm rethinking my strategy here. So probably I'll move those and put this, yeah, that'll work better. Oops. My little guard, guard rope thing. Um, and then the other one I'm gonna put back there is this valerian. I do have valerian on my balcony, but it's also not doing so well, so I don't think I'll harvest it this year and I might just see if it comes back next year and does any better. Uh, I don't know about that one yet, so we'll see. Okay, that's, that's a better fit there. So rose hips that are not labeled. <laughs> These are labeled rose hips and not. Okay, I'm gonna keep those aside. I'm do something about that. Wild rose petals, okay. I don't think I can safely stack the ones on the bottom here. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so the raspberry leaves, actually I want those to be fairly accessible because they're good for um, period discomfort and issues around that. So I'll keep those a bit more accessible. And then, oh yeah, that's the part that I relabel. Okay, I'll just use that and then get rid of it. Bearberry. Oh yeah, I was, this is in the same sort of boat as the birch, where I just harvested a very few, enough for maybe one or two cups of tea, just to see if I'd like it, because I don't know if I will yet. Uh, and so sometime this winter, I'll do that. Um, I have collected some pansies over two years now. They, it doesn't look like a lot of flowers, but that is a lot of flowers. Um, but I don't produce enough on my balcony to do fresh pansy or fresh violet syrup. Uh, so I will have to uh, collect them then. Uh, so that's what I've done. Uh, what else have I got here? Two, two very many things. Okay. Sumac, this I also harvested when I was in the Okanagan visiting my brother. Haven't used it yet. Probably will make sumac aid at some point just for fun. Because I can. Um, this is mostly, it's called Prairie Berry Tea. That's the company. It's mostly Saskatoon berries. Yeah, Saskatoon, blueberries, choke cherries, cranberries, currants, raisins, hibiscus, rose hips, natural flavors, whatever those are. I get it mostly for Saskatoons because it does taste like Saskatoons. It's lovely. Um, probably have to fit it into the bottom here somewhere. It's just plastic, so I'm not so worried if that falls out. Some of these jars, though, tiny bit concerning. Okay. Now. <clears throat> oh, I do have a little tiny bit of elderflower. Okay, I thought I did somewhere, but then I couldn't find it. 
So I'll put that in here with the elderberries. And then, what else have I still got? Uh, lemon balm, more lemon balm. This was the tea before I started growing it. So where is my, where did I put my lemon balm? I thought I had a bigger container of it. Where did it go? Oh yeah, down here. Okay, so I'll put this one up here for now and just use that up eventually. Um, this was when I was more optimistic about how few rose petals I'd go through. So I will combine that with the other poorly labeled, incorrectly labeled container. I'm also gonna top up this one. This is dried apple. Well, it's not at the moment because it's empty, but it will have dried apple in it again. When I make an apple pie, I'm gonna cut up some of the uh, peels into little pieces and dry them and just use that to help sort of sweeten up some tea blends. Uh, and then I have just a few strawberry leaves because I try and grow strawberries on my balcony and then they never really grow very well. So, whoops, dropped the lid. All right, that lid is gonna need a wash now, but this is the little strawberry container. That was just me pulling off the, pulling it away from the 3M hook now that it's laden with jars that's a bit heavier and just hangs a bit differently. So, excellent. Um, then I have a few other little bags of things that I got from a local witchy shop. One is burdock root, which seems ridiculous to buy. And I might try and go to a traditional Chinese medicine shop to buy it again, because it'll probably be cheaper. Um, but it grows like a weed around here. But I'd need a spade to dig it out and I'd get a lot of strange looks and yeah. So I haven't done that. <laughs> um, but I do have some burdock root. I've used it in um, a uh, glycerite for skin soothing. It's very nice for that. Uh, mugwort, which can be used for dreaming tea. It's not a very nice flavor, so I wouldn't use it for its flavor. Um, but you know, if you put enough mint in there, anything is palatable. <laughs> um, and wintergreen, which I haven't used yet because it was sort of tucked away in a corner. So, there it is. Now, this is what remains of my tea situation. So these are the ones that I have to either rename or have very little uh, anything left in them. So I'll just use them up and then see what's what. These are two that I haven't used yet because scentless chamomile Actually, I'm pretty sure you can use, but I have to do a little more research on that. Um, but it looks like chamomile. It does have a scent. I don't know why it's called scentless, but there we go. Um, and then this one I have to research some more. Northern Bedster. I just took a little bit. It's not a cleaver, but it's another bedstra that's related to cleavers. So I don't know if it does the same thing. I don't know if it does anything or is even edible. So I'm not going to put these two with the regular cheese yet. I'm just putting those to the side so that I uh, will do some, a little more research at some point. And then this box is tea blends I've already got. So elderberry syrup. Okay, I may actually just make that this winter sometime. And then these blends I've gotten in various boxes. Ooh, metal leaf. I should. Mm. figure out if there's any chance that I will be able to fit these on here. So I think this, I might need another si little situation for these pre-blended teas that I've got. Um, this one has lemon balm, mullein, lavender, chamomile, and Tulsi. I've never used Tulsi basil. Um, it's actually not even opened yet, so we'll see. I'll use it eventually. And then this is, where do I have my nettle here? Down here. Okay, so I'll tuck that in on the bottom shelf there and use that up. Once my fresh nettle is gone, what is this one? Holy Santo tea, fruit tea blend. What's in here? Lemon peels, orange peels, rose hips, hibiscus. Okay, interesting. Could be a good cheery fall sort of situation. Um, Heather flowers. 
Have I ever used Heather? Can you eat Heather? I don't even know. I'm gonna add this to the bed straw sunless chamomile collection of things to read up on because I really know absolutely not a thing about Heather. And then this one is just a bit of hibiscus, which I have somewhere. Where did I put the hibiscus? There it is. Okay. So I'll add that to that collection and probably use that up first because neither of them are fresh. I'll just get that out of the way then. Okay. So then the T4. Hmm. Okay. I just tried badly to uh, rearrange the camera situation. Um, filmmaking is not my area. Uh, plants are more my, my area, but uh, anyway, I'm doing the best I can here. So these are the ones that I'm keeping as my emergency backups because I tell you, if I ever run out of either elder or nettle, it's not nice. Um, horsetail I did run out of, wasn't thrilled about that. Um, this is actually, I should, hmm. Where did I put the calendula up here? Okay, oops, there. Cause I should use that old one up first. That's last year's calendula. And then this year's calendula is, hmm. I clearly have not spent enough time using this um, tripod. Anyway, so that's good. Oh yeah, blue cornflower. I don't think I talked about that. I've, it grew like a weed in our garden growing up and I could not for the life of me get it to grow on my balcony. I got one flower this year and tried to just leave it and let it get established and then hopefully go to seed. And, uh, we'll see what happens next year because there's really no reason it couldn't grow in Alberta. It just, as you can see from the empty bottle, doesn't like my balcony for some reason. So I'm just gonna store that bottle in this same container here. All right, so let's see if this other tripod works any better. That one was driving me a bit bananas. Okay, so this is the storage box. Dried apple, that container can go into the storage box until I actually make a pie. Willow, hmm. I think I'll just, actually I might put that on my other shelf of <coughs> vaguely uh, witchy things. These are the two root petals that need to get relabeled and then chamomile and Hmm. Do I have room for self-heal up here? Kind of. Okay, I'll tuck it in on my shelf and then raspberry leaf here as a backup. And chamomile, I really don't use very much. Um, which is why I've got this scentless chamomile because it's local and grows like weed. Because it is a weed. Um, <laughs> and uh, if I can use that, I'll probably use that in lieu of chamomile and then just not have to buy chamomile. So we'll see, I'll tuck that away and just hang on to it for the moment. There's not even enough to really make a cup of tea. I'd have to use it in a blender or something. Okay, so that's my little storage box that can go away back in the corner that I always forget about. And then I'll do some more research with those and relabel those and put this on my other shelf. Amazing, okay. All right, I'm much happier with the state of my uh, little apothecary here and its little shelves. I still, I don't know, these are the bigger jars. I still may get a little shelf and just put it higher up here somehow. Not entirely sure about that, but anyway, <coughs> excuse me. That is the final product and I kind of love it. I may rearrange things periodically to make sure that, you know, the things I use the most often are, are closest and whatnot. These are a couple of tea adjacent things. I've got lilac honey, lilac sugar, and this. Some sort of lemony, what's in here? Honey and lemons, yeah, that's it. And then these are all the, some of these herbs are also for my balcony, but they're ones that I grow for cooking, as opposed to tea, although chocolate mint, you can use in a tea, as well as baking. And then uh, a couple of tinctures and oils and things that I've got on the go. So yeah, very happy about that. And I'll switch over to the other shelf where I think I'll keep my tea blends. These are just the uh, apothecary sort of ingredients. Okay, so this is the next area that I've got to reorganize. This was covered. 
with like stacked three high herbal ingredients, um, which wasn't working for me, um, in addition to the ones off in the corner. So at the moment, these are the, the blends that I've got to find a home for. These are the blends I've already made, which I can show you here. I've got one for colds. I've got one for tea of serenity, just calming um, at that time of the month tea. And <clears throat> if they don't all fall over on me, a um, anti-anxiety, anti-spasmodic tea because my muscles seize up and get too tense and it hurts. And uh, then I've got a few other plant adjacent things, sprays and whatnot. Um, this little pill bottle thing is pea, po pea pollen. Um, pine pollen, which I still haven't found a use for, a couple of incense blends and salves and candles, and then a couple other, oh, another candle, and actually I might put this here, the willow red osier dogwood and eucalyptus, which eucalyptus I don't think I'll ever use internally. I'd have to do some more research on that one too. Um, so I may do a bit of test forwarding. Oh, and I've got a whole bunch of books and uh, whatnot under here. These are all plant related books or plant adjacent books and everything really needs to get organized. So to that end, what I've got are, whoops, did I make a mess? That's typical. All right, I've got a set of these crates, which I'm gonna stack up on here and then reorganize things slightly that way. Um, because it also, the, the apothecary chaos meant that I couldn't see the book titles either and just sort of had to remember what colors things were, which I, sometimes I can do, but not always. So I am going to probably not film the disassembly of this and then I'll reassemble it and show you what, it, what I am imagining and we'll see if that works. Okay, this is what I've got so far. I had to remove a lamp and some pictures and threw these down and removed a couple of, uh, hmm, this I should probably earlier work some Stack those a little better. All right, okay, so it, usually, when I'm organizing my books, I have alphabetized them by author or subject or something. But since these are all already organized kind of by subject, I kind of like having them by color. I wouldn't usually like that for most of my other shelves, but for the plant related shelf, I'll go with it for now and see uh, how this works. Let me see if I can arrange things a bit better here. There we go. Okay. Some of these had to be organized by the bigger ones on the bottom in order to not break things because these shelves are only, I don't know, what is that? Six to eight inches deep. So some of these bigger, like this Herbal Medicine Maker's Handbook is probably about a foot long. So that's not gonna work. And then I think this book, oh yeah, that's too tall for that shelf. So. It'll be a bit fudged here, but that's okay, I think. Uh -huh. Alright. What else can go in the top there? Don't know if this one's gonna fit. Nope. Definitely not. Let's see, this one probably will though. This is, I have not read this one. This is Hildegard von Bingen's Physica. She was one of the first female European herbalists uh, to actually write things down. At any rate, I mean, I'm sure there were many others who never wrote things down. Um, stick that tree lore book up there. Um, and uh, I basically just have too many books. It's an ongoing problem. Um, <laughs> It really is a never-ending issue for me uh, because I just, I can't help it. I need my books and I love the plants and I love books about plants, so this is where we're at here. Um, 
some of these are more like less like herbalism books and more like just caring for the planet sort of books but i sort of feel like they're in the same spirit yeah or maybe you don't anyway maybe it's just me Let's see. All right, this little stack of books is also sort of herbalism, witchiness, that kind of vein of things. However, I ran out of room for those. I was gonna use some of the crates and stack them up here. And so I may have to get a couple more crates because I have too many books. I mean, the other option would be to get rid of some of the books, but we'll see if that happens. Okay, so this is the final result out here. I quite like it. I've put the herbs I've got to do some research on at the top and figure out what I'm going to do with those. I really have a lot of books. I should, you know, spend some more time reading. Um, <laughs> I already do a lot, but so many books, so little time. It's an ongoing problem. Um, and then I put some of the witchy adjacent things sprays and candles and you know that sort of thing down here and sticks because you always need a good collection of sticks and then these are the pre-blended herbal teas either ones i've made or ones i've gotten in usually boxes of other things and then underneath it's a bit more clear now um i've got a few herbalism supplies in these containers and then all these spiral books are my ones for my classes and a couple of plant related puzzles because I like that sort of thing. Uh, so I think that's all for today. I still have to figure out what to do with the lamp that I removed there, but uh, that's a problem for this evening, <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, anyway, I am really just enjoying my, uh, my bookcase and my apothecary, and it's all very geeky and yeah, but I'm crazy about plants. So uh, that's it for today, I think. Uh, if you've made it this far, congratulations. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time.